webcam. So OBS itself is directly accessing my webcam. I see. But how do I remove it? Minus. Are you sure you wish to remove? Yes. Okay. And so now. Yay. Hey. Hi. Or you could. Uh... Oh, right. I forgot. I also have a microphone. <laughs> ah. Very cool. I got. I got a little tiny microphone. I can't. <laughs> cool. I, yeah, that is tiny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I couldn't hear you when your thing was. Uh, what I can't figure out is it, is it actually using my nice microphone? Oh, that's uh, a good question. No, it's not. Does this sound better? Uh, no, I, okay. Yes. <laughs> it sounds it. amazing. Does this sound a hundred dollars better? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see is mine using this yeah it's totally using this okay cool oh you could try that it uh put your like snap over by where the other microphone is and then snap by the microphone that you that's right by your face and see which one registers louder no it's definitely my nice microphone that's oh, recording okay. right now cool and then yeah i hear it i hear the difference and um, it sounds and it sounds a hundred dollars better yeah that's yeah <laughs> my i can hear the compression and the um the uh noise filtering yep oh are we doing asmr hold on let me go get something no it's just that <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought we're, we're like problem solving and, you know, sometimes you need cake and ice cream to problem solve. Yeah, you do. Wait, is that cake and or ice cream? Yeah. And. Nice. So wait, I have, I have do. It's similar. I have a whiteboard. Yeah. Am I able to share? You can share screen. What could I share? I was going to share my text editor. But I, what if I need to draw pictures? Uh, oh, then maybe open up some sort of picture drawing wait, program. Wait, so can I share my... Oh, you can share your screen. Can I share my screen? Yes. At the very bottom, okay. next to the camera and the uh, microphone. You have to move your mouse around for the little uh, controls to show up. Yeah, oh, I also, it. I can do this. Hey. Is it under more actions? Uh, no, it's to the left of that. So to the left of the chat. Toggle tile view, participants, to the left raise lower that. my hand, open yep. chat, start staring my screen. Okay. So There's I'm sharing, I'm sharing this screen, but now, wait, this is going to get complicated. Check this out. So I see now, the screen in the screen. I see you looking at my screen, looking at you. Yeah, hold on. Also, there's another way I can do this, which Wait, is... This thing's going to go over here now. Reverse. I see reverse no, right no. now. No, no. Atari cool. Archives. Yep. yep I momentarily JSON. saw the outline of your email. So much JSON. <laughs> <coughs> Why is Visualizer not opening? What's... Uh... This is like... Oh, yeah. So there's another... I can do a different way of sharing my text, <laughs> which is to set it as my background, like that. Ah. <laughs> oh wait. wait, I'm trying there. to. Oh wait, yeah. here it is. Wait, I got lost on all my screens. Okay. Oh, you know, yeah, the thing that I'm. You're yeah. gonna like what's gonna. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Look at you. Oh yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Oh yeah. Okay. And... Updates may be available. No, I don't want any updates. <laughs> um, you can also uh How the dare screen. You. The screen that is showing uh the Jitsi stuff. I see your hand moving around. Yeah. So I'm only recording my text editor. That's I could record the window. 
that you you are sharing with me, but there we go. I usually just record my text editor. That's what I'm used to. No, I'm recording your own screen. I'm recording this window, yeah. Cool. Okay, there we go. So here's my hand. Boy, the resolution isn't so good, is it? Um, I guess that's okay. I don't know. Okay. Seems all right. I see. <laughs> I see a smiley face, and then uh, it got wiped away. Okay. Here we are. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should make like a, a folder for this. Okay. Are you ready to? Are you ready for the unveiling? Yeah. Okay. So I thought that we should think through like an algorithmic kind of a problem. And I hadn't imagined we would actually get to the point of trying to implement anything. It was more like, let's take a, a sort of an open-ended problem that someone might care about and like think about different ways that we might approach it as a way of kind of illustrating what possibly good thinking looks like. Okay. <laughs> um, so, right, yes. So here's the, the thing I was wondering about. You know word clouds? Yeah. Yeah, so I was thinking about word clouds, and I was thinking it would be cool for me to make my own word clouds, um, specifically based on Yelp reviewer data, because I have this cool Yelp data set, and I thought it would be nice, like, oh, Danny has written, you know, 100 Yelp reviews. Like, I wonder what his most, like, interesting used words are in his Yelp reviews. Um, okay. But, like, that's sort of neither here nor there. It was more like how, like, when you lay out a, a word cloud, like, what is the algorithm that lays it out to look nice? Like, how does that work? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, go. <laughs> uh, all right. How, how are we going to think about this? Um, let's see. Well, first we should write down, so how do you lay out the words? Um, in a way that looks nice. Well, that makes me think of, uh, what does looks nice <laughs> mean? Um, and then that makes me think of, like, something about no gaps or small gaps between words. Uh, no big empty spaces. So yeah. something about contiguity, is that the right word? I don't know. Yeah, contiguous, yeah, like next to each other. Yeah, but would you say contiguity or the property? Yeah, yeah. contiguous, Contig con con contiguity, yes. Yeah. So like imagine each of these boxes is a word, you know, like yeah. word. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, I do write my own name in my reviews a lot, so... <clears throat> So yeah, I was imagining... And your name. So I, I imagine the things that you did. So like not a lot of weird gaps or big empty spaces. So it's sort of like filling out from the middle is sort of what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, and avoiding... I don't know. I mean, this is going to be hard to, to make precise, but avoiding strong patterns like this. Like that. I guess that maybe that wouldn't be a terrible word cloud. I'll put it down anyway. I thought what With might be helpful mark. at some point is actually we should just pull up, we should like search for word cloud uh, and okay. look at a couple of examples because that might have us realize, oh, like here's what's good or bad looking about these examples. And we could maybe do that in a second. I like that. Um, uh, yeah. Now I'm thinking about uh, the big words in the middle and smaller words as you go out something mm -hmm. along those lines and now i'm thinking of i think there's a formal way of saying this but imagining like a rubber band between the center of everything and the center of the word that you're about to place and you just like <clears throat> let the rubber band pull it as close to the center as as it can what do you mean by the center? So you're talking about, like, I'm just about to place a new word. Here's the block. But then you imagine a rubber band stretching around the outside like this. And then you imagine the rubber band, like, 
moving that block sort of in until it's sort of wedged in a convenient location? Um, yeah, uh, I was thinking a rubber band, like a, a single line, uh, so a, a pole in the so, middle of the O in word, and so then another pole, here. yeah, and then another pole in the middle of the block that you're about to place, and then it pulls that block towards the center, yeah. So maybe, so in the example that I've drawn here, it's gonna end up probably wedged, like, there. Yeah, and that doesn't look good. So. Which is maybe, but I mean, it's nice. What you're doing right now is you're kind of brainstorming high level ideas. Yeah. Um, and it could be like a variation on that idea is going to work out. Yeah. I'm thinking like you could maintain a specific pole and then move that block uh, or start it off in a direction where the least amount of stuff currently is. So like. Uh, I see. So that would be like rotated. you started over here. Yeah, and then let it be pulled in as far as it can go. So as a very rough algorithm, like you yeah. start by placing uh, whatever word is largest, and we can yep. talk in a minute about like determining sizes of words. But start by placing you... placing whichever is largest. Yep. And then, uh, like figure out like which heading, which direction contains the least amount of other stuff, and that like how we do that is maybe a little bit unclear, but we could maybe figure something like that out yeah um and then i don't know you could actually think about physically like doing a physical simulation like you place it and you imagine it has mass and you imagine this is a spring exerting a force and you sort of like have it move step by step until you detect a collision between this rectangle and the other rectangle is that what you're yeah. imagining or yeah. okay pretty much <laughs> Okay, so that seems like one approach. Um, and even if we don't end up doing that part, like we could still think about building from the inside outward, and we yeah. could still keep the idea of like if we're building from inside out, let's always choose outs to be in whichever direction has the least stuff. Yeah, or if I like see several, yeah, find um, the nearest n unoccupied spot, and then yeah, put the next, uh, use that to choose what's the the next place um that also seems like it would be that seems like it might be easier to implement um i could also imagine that uh ha having some sort of pathological thing um where maybe there's some if you add words in just the right way you get this obviously weird shape that you don't want anyway yeah did you have yeah i I don't know. I'm thinking like this seems like a pretty hard problem and it feels to me like no matter what we do, it might end up being that it generates a bad looking thing and sort of <laughs> yeah. like a, a cheap way, a cheap way out of this could be like, let's try and code up some measure of uh, some measure that would determine, does it look bad? Like we could have some way of deciding like how many gap, like small gaps are there between things or whatever. Um, and so then, like, we could say, we could actually have it generate, you know, three or four ones at random and then have it select the best out of the random ones it generates. It's sort of like yeah. a, a meta a meta algorithm. Um, when you were saying, I forget what phrase you used a second ago, but just to, like, get a totally different idea out here, let's imagine that we break our screen into a grid. And I don't, I don't actually have an idea here yet beyond let's think about it on a grid, but let's think about <laughs> okay. it on a grid. So, so let's say, say, same thing. Like I place, I place word. the first word here. Okay. Now that it's on a grid, like I'm thinking, so the next, the next block that we place, if it's going to be contiguous with this word we've already placed has got to start out at one of these positions. Yeah. Um, and, so and I don't know if we'd want to choose the position and then the orientation or choose the orientation and then the position, mm. yeah, but something like that. Uh, so let's imagine. Yeah. Uh, I guess. So I could imagine doing like, Every other word is vertical. Every every root and all the other words are horizontal, and you sort 
you go by the biggest word and then you go smaller and smaller and that would do something to distribute the horizontal and uh, vertical words right because you don't right you don't want it to end up like a whole bunch of vertical words like all here yeah and then a whole bunch of horizontal words all there that would be bad yeah um yeah i had a similar thought start with the largest word and proceed uh down for incrementally smaller words um and you wouldn't have to strictly alternate like the two orientations i was also imagining just two orientations here and here yeah um I think if you But you could how you could like probabilistically determine it, you could be like, you know, sixty or like it could be like a fifty fifty chance. Gotcha. Yeah, that seems cool too. So let's imagine So let's imagine doing this so far. So we've we've placed the first word. Let's imagine for for the ease of trying it out, just strictly alternating between orientations. So the next orientation is gonna be horizontal. Should I just choose one of the boxes that is touching my current one at random? That might let me choose this corner. Well, maybe we don't want to count corners. I don't know. Because um, I could choose the corner box and put one there. That's not obviously bad. <clears throat> yeah, I think it would be easy to iterate through, uh, like, all the, all the different options there are whether it includes the corners or not, and do some sort of measure of how close to the center you are. <coughs> so distance from the center of the word block. Yeah, I'm thinking out an algorithm now. Okay. So let's pretend we place the next one, and it looks like... I guess one issue... Well, all right. So let, let's say we place the next one here. So these are my words. I guess one issue I'm thinking about is we haven't really decided how many different sizes there are. And so the grid that I've yeah. drawn is pro like doesn't really work out because as soon as I go down one size, now, now it's like too small. Um, but let's pretend that's not a problem for the moment. Or you could have a grid that uh, the grid changes size. Yeah, could be. So it could be decide the smallest the smallest size of like squares that would make sense. Or you could just start with some size and then if you determine that you needed a smaller size, like recalculate everything. Yeah. I could Hold imagine on, let's, having let's... rounds of placing words. So you have like all the words that are about the same size as each other get placed in one round and then repeat. Now that you're done with that round, you redo the grid and make it a little bit smaller. Um, what were you about to say? Let's yeah, let's. Something. I wanna. I wanna not think about that for a minute. Let me. Let me get my idea out, and then we can come back. Okay. So my idea was, uh, like we said before, starting from the largest word, going to the smallest word, strictly alternating the two orientations. But then the way that you're going to determine placement is. Um, you look at all of the squares that are around the perimeter of what's been placed so far, and you just choose one of those at random. And that's where you're going to place your next one. So if my next one is vertical, I might randomly place it here, for example. And so now it's going to go vertical down like this. So you've got uh, choose horizontal and vertical at random, and also choose one of the neighbors of the current uh like where to place next at random yeah i can think of two problems here okay one problem is if we're just choosing a perimeter square at random i might just randomly make like a really long chain of these off to the right yeah but we'd said that to look good we all want them all kind of clustered to the inside a second problem is as you see what i've done now yeah. Like the next one that I place might also be three squares, but if I randomly choose here, it won't fit horizontally there. So right. So keeping track of how big the remaining sizes are. That's also hard. yeah. Also, like if I'd put it here, for example, I'd put it there, and you'd and now we've gap. got a small gap in the middle, which we said we didn't like. 
Yeah, boo. Boo. Okay. So? So we, well, we've come up with two algorithms so far, like this one and the the rubber band one. Do you want to like test out the rubber band one to sort of see how it feels? Uh, sure. Uh, what do you mean by test out? Like what I was just doing here is like let's let's pretend we're the algorithm. Oh, okay. And kind of imagine what what kinds what of issues happen? might come up. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, so here I place, so now we have no grid. Or like, the grid is the grid of pixels. Yeah, and so then you put like a, a central dot in the middle of word. And that's okay. like, that one never changes. And then you have, you randomly pl pick uh, vertical versus horizontal for the next word. Okay, um, I randomly pick point. vertical. No, okay. I randomly pick horizontal. Okay. Okay, that's good too. And then uh, you place it somewhere way outside the current uh, blob. Yeah. And how exactly how exactly to pick that place? Uh, maybe we can just leave that um, for later, and then uh -huh. pull it directly towards the yeah. So make a line between the center of the Danny block and the the other block, and then move it along that line until it intersects with something that's already there. Yeah, that's what I did just just there. I yeah, you did. It might, it might not have been obvious, but that's what happened. Okay, so now let's do another one. I could imagine um, getting but, but, pieces of paper and actually moving those around. Maybe that might help. But this time, all right? So we. <laughs> So if I randomly choose vertical and place it here, it's going to pull it there in an awkward position. Yeah. But we had said earlier on that you're going to choose directions that don't already contain a lot of stuff. Yeah. So again, like not being too specific about what that means, like maybe, I mean, this, this is maybe going to push the problem back because if I put one there and then I have another one uh, that gets pulled in here. Yeah. So, like, I'm going to pull in words from, like, different directions until I've got a bunch of blocks surrounding this guy. Yeah. And then that problem is going to resurface because every direction has the same amount of stuff. Um, and so we'll just choose any direction now, but it's going to pull it into a thing that creates a weird a weird gap. So Somewhere. maybe we should yeah. think about... But maybe that... Because both algorithms we've come up with so far have created weird gaps, maybe we should start thinking about... If that's our main goal, is not to have weird tiny gaps. Yeah, I was, I was just that? thinking like maybe that's okay. Oh, you were gonna <laughs> get, give up on that aesthetic principle? <laughs> yeah, or or we could okay. So what if we want to never have tiny gaps? Uh, that's another thing we could think about. Okay, how would you do that? Uh, how could you guarantee that you never have tiny gaps? Um, I don't know. I gotta like draw stuff out. Alrighty. Uh, All right. So what about this? So let's say I've placed I've placed two blocks. You've placed two blocks. <clears throat> um. <laughs> yep, we've said it. Um. You're welcome. So this is a mod. <laughs> so this is a modification. Well, I don't know if I like this, but I'm going to say it out loud anyway. So rather than choose a random... So we're on a grid here. I didn't draw it. Before I'd said, let's choose a random square along the perimeter. You get weird gaps when, like, you put one here, and then there's a gap in there. So what if, what if the only valid places to put it are, like, inward corners? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh... So right now there are only two valid places I could put next, put the next block here or here. Yeah. So let's say I put it here. So now I've got this one. So you want. And now some valid sort of place would be here, here, or here. Concavity measure. Yeah. So what's that going to look like? I I have a feeling that's going to lead to. 
like the same looking word cloud every time uh yeah also um if you depending on on how strict you are you can only go out to the right uh <laughs> so you'd have to seed one more word over on the left hand side in order for the cloud to grow out from the word from the central mm -hmm. word i guess you already violated that rule when you placed the first and second block you you weren't placing those blocks in the right. corner so yeah but at least but i mean goal accomplished though like yeah, i think no this gaps. way of yeah, I think this way of placing is going to avoid gaps, although maybe not. I mean, I might have drawn it. Yeah, what if... Using some assumptions that that make my thing work. Like, what if yeah. the second one had been here? Then what? Well, so then valid placements would be here and here. Yeah, but if you have words uh, to the left of word, I don't know if if that's left for you you might eventually you i mean i could imagine a situation where you might eventually end up wrapping around and causing a problem yeah so like maybe right after danny on the right side of word you have one more other word on the left side of word is that the yeah. right orientation for you D is is danny to the right and yeah the place that you're at right now is to the left okay cool yeah Write it backwards so the ambulance can tell. <laughs> I think so, that's how it works. So I could place one here or here. I still don't feel like this if is you... so... I, I kind of like how this is shaping up. So like with your modified yeah. rule where you seed, you seed like a couple of sides and then you build out from the, you know, like these corners. Yeah, I, I think it wouldn't... Um, I think it would work... I think it wouldn't guarantee no gaps, but I think it would be it would look all right. And if it was the case where like, you know, eight out of ten times you get no gaps, we could just do that thing I said earlier where you generate five. Yeah. And then have some, you know, post generation way of saying, like, oh, let's throw away these ones that are bad. Yeah. Okay, I should have told you that I actually have to stop in one minute oh okay well this might fun. have seemed like a relatively short problem solving session i had fun uh, yeah uh, no I've i think we some... had some good ideas yeah i've heard some uh some people talk about uh half hour is probably the maximum that you can actually be effective anyway before you uh yeah peter out but i had cake oh well and ice cream those those help there's Did that yeah, guy I'm think sure about some those background things? variants well until yeah. we meet again uh oh, yeah. speaking of which i kind of would like to do this more though like actually do this maybe even program it up okay do you want to do it in java or uh, since that's what your classes are i wouldn't say i want to do it in java but <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like we could do i don't know want is a strong word Let's do it in process. Let's do it in what's that thing? PS five, uh, okay. which is like pro. Do you know about processing? Uh, yeah, it's um JavaScript. So or... right, well, processing is Java, but PS five is the JavaScript version of processing. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm not well. As you can tell, I'm not super familiar with, but uh, I'm sure I can get it up and running. And yeah, I mean, it's just like. It's like it got an in-browser ID. Rad. That makes okay. it super easy for students. They don't have to worry about setting up the ID and stuff. I guess the main thing I want to check is making sure it's easy to display words in a vertical orientation because I don't want to fiddle around with that part of it. I want that to be built into whatever I... graphics we're using. I guess I don't know, but I would imagine there's a way to turn a word into a picture, and then there's another way to rotate pictures. So that is definitely true. I I would I would be. I I think it's probably gonna be okay. <laughs> okay, very sorry. 
All right, well, I'll, uh, you know, why don't you poke at me or I'll poke at you about when we have another 30 minutes to do this. Okay. Catch you on the flip-flop. Wait, and did you record your own version of this? I'm recording my text editor, yeah. Only your text editor, but not your awesome picture on over the text editor? Uh, correct. Oh, right, I forgot I was doing that. <laughs> oh, shoot, I should have done that. No, it's oh, been well. great this whole time. I feel like I feel like this has been a tactical mistake. Maybe we should pretend we didn't do this and do this whole thing over again. Well, a actually, time because I think this is part of the process. More... Figuring out like what is what is the best way to to record and and what to record and all that. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I want to actually use I want to edit down the video and use it in my class, but it creates a lot more visual interest. I think to have faces in it. Like, I, I don't think students are going to listen as hard when it's not just, you know, when it's not faces. Gotcha. I don't know. We can we can try it again. Oh, the aspect ratio is all weird. Whoa. That's weird. Oh, of the, I wonder of what's the text up with editor? That. Yeah. I wonder if it's... So I have my screen tilted sideways. I wonder if it has something to do with, like, are pixels on monitors taller than they are wide or something? Nope. They're all square? Uh, I don't think so, because yeah, they so. got the R no. and the G and the B, so they have to be elongated in some direction, I would think. Maybe not. Anyway. No, because if you think about the resolution, like the re if you have like a physically rectangular monitor, like the resolution yeah. Oh yeah, would make do. sense You're if right. it was like little square pixels, yeah. They do like the number going left, right is bigger than the number going up, down. Yeah. And the physical monitor is bigger going left, right than up, down, usually, in the normal orientation. Oh, you're wearing your pants shirt. Nice. Pants. Okay, are we going to climb on Tuesday? Uh, yeah. And right, not cool. tomorrow? Uh, correct, not tomorrow. Because... You're doing We're that, having so. like a spree week, yeah. Cool. We went to the zoo today. Cool. I actually took Nadia climbing this morning. <gasps> That's awesome. I thought about calling you, but it was like pretty early. And like kind of I was notice, I probably uh, driving Aaron to the airport. Yeah. Aaron's out again? Yep. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, have fun with your ice cream. All right, I'll go. Bye. Bye.